Today we'll see how we can use different UI elements or user interface elements in Unity to create a start menu. So let's get going. Go to the scenes folder and create a new scene. Let's call it menu and rename our current scene game. Let's open the newly created menu scene. The first thing we need to do in this new scene is add the same skybox we're using in our game. So let's go to the environment tab of our lighting window and add the fs002 underscore night underscore moonless skybox. Now our start menu is gonna have four UI elements. A text logo just for show, a start button that's gonna let the user transition into the game if he or she clicks it, an exit button that quits the game if clicked, and finally two lines of text at the bottom that tell the user their best scores. So let's design this menu piece by piece. First, we must add a canvas game object to our scene. Go to game object from the menu bar, then under UI, select canvas. And here is our canvas. A canvas is just an invisible panel that we can pin different UI elements on, like texts, images, and buttons. You can also see that Unity has automatically added an event system game object. I don't think that we're going to be tinkering with it, so let's just leave it as is. Now the first thing we're going to do is add a panel game object to our canvas. So I click on the canvas game object, and then from UI, select panel. And let's name it logo panel. This panel will help us in placing our text logo on the canvas. Now if we select the rect tool from up here, we can see that a blue target sign has now appeared in the center of our panel, as well as four blue circles on each of the panel's corners. The target sign is what allows us to move the panel around the canvas if we drag it around. And the blue circles allow us to stretch or shrink the panel around the canvas. So let's pull up the panel so that it covers up a quarter of the canvas height. And let's stretch it across so that it covers the entire canvas width. So now the area that the panel occupies on the canvas is going to be the designated area for our text logo. But before we go ahead and add our text logo, we want to make sure that our panel game object is always going to have this size and position on the canvas across all screen sizes. Let me show you how this can be a problem if we don't account for it. If we change the screen size in our game window to a typical Full HD screen, then you can see that our panel has moved from where we originally placed it. To fix this problem, we need to fix our panel to the top center of our canvas by anchoring it, as Unity calls it, to that region of the canvas so that it stays there at all time. And the way to do that is by going to the inspector window for our panel game object and then select the anchor presets menu from its rect transform component. Here are all the different regions of the canvas that we can anchor our panel on. Hold the shift key down or the option key if you're using a Mac like me to change the pivot point of our panel game object on the canvas and then select the top center region of the canvas. And now our panel is anchored to the top center region of our canvas. And by the way, the rect transform component is what controls the position, scale and rotation of the different UI game objects on the canvas. It's similar to the regular transform component that we used to in 3D game objects. So now if we change the screen size in our game window to a 1920x1080, we can see that our panel is staying in the same place. However, it's not scaling up with the increased screen size. And so let's go to the inspector window of the canvas game object, and under canvas scale, change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. And we'll choose a reference resolution of 1920x1080, just because it's common in mobile phones displays. It looks like we might have to readjust our panel size on the canvas. So now if we change the screen size of the game window, not only does the position of the panel remain still, but also its size scales with the increased screen size. And here is a different screen size, and a third one. So we can see that our panel occupies the same portion of our canvas regardless of the screen size. And this change by the way is applied to all children game objects under this canvas game object. So we only need to do it once. Now it's time to place our text logo inside the canvas region covered by the panel. So let's turn off the background image of the panel because we want it to be transparent so that our text logo can be visible and then right click on the logo panel game object from the hierarchy and add a text mesh pro game object from the UI menu. If this is your first time adding text mesh pro as I'm sure that it is, then Unity will prompt you to import it as a package. So hit import text mesh pro essentials. Once that's done, hit import text mesh pro examples and extras, then close the prompt. Let's rename our newly added text game object to logo and go to its anchor presets menu. Hold down the shift or option key and select the stretch in all directions preset. This preset stretches our text in all directions against its parent rectangle which is the panel logo so that it remains confined in its area and doesn't overflow outside the panel area. 
And now in the text input field of our text game object, we we'll write something like temper run unity. And then center it horizontally and put it in the middle vertically. You can see that our text understands center as being the center of the panel, not the entire canvas. This is because we made the children of the panel game object and then stretched it against its rectangular area. Now let's make our text bold and then italicized and change its size to an outrageous 180 points. Also, we want to change the font style. I've included a nice selection of fonts that we can use in your Temperon Clone Starter Kit package. So let's go to the fonts folder and drag the archaeological caps font onto the font asset field of our logo text. And now our logo text has a new style that I personally think looks much cooler than the default option. Also, notice that because our text does not entirely fit the horizontal space of our panel, it's overflowing in a new line and not outside the canvas, which is what we want. We've done the right settings and left the rest for Unity, so that we don't have to manually adjust every detail. So now let's reduce the font size to say 140 points, so that our logo remains on a single line. And let's add a color gradient to our logo text so that it can really stun the user and draw him to the game. Tick the color gradient option under the main setting of our logo text game object. This setting allows us to color each corner of every character in this text input field with a different color, effectively creating a color gradient for our text. I'm gonna match the colors of the top two corners and also match the colors of the bottom two corners. Now just take a look at our logo text. It looks sharp and stunning. It also has character. Let's see it in the game. Maximize on play, hit play. Here is our logo, welcoming the user. And we made it using simple text, nothing too complicated. Let's exit play mode. 